The Earth System, a video series for educational institutions for free use presented by the German Geological Society, the DGGV. Hello everyone, I welcome the viewers of another episode of my video series on the Earth System. The next videos of this series are about transform faults. What is so special about them? What distinguishes them from other faults? And why are they such an important factor in plate tectonics? I would first like to explain the principle of transform faults before I get to some geometric relationships which are very important for transform faults. Transform faults are strike-slip faults. The name strike-slip fault is given to faults where two blocks move past each other, such as the San Andreas fault, which is one of the best known transform faults. So it is neither a normal fault that we expect in graben systems, nor a thrust fault or overthrust as it frequently occurs in collision zones, for example, in subduction zones or where two continents collide with each other. Of course, there are also many strike-slip faults in the subduction zones and orogenic formations, but they are different from transform faults because they cannot be defined as clearly as it is possible with transform faults, especially concerning the beginning and end. Transform faults are always connecting links between plate boundaries. That means the beginning and end of a transform fault is clearly defined namely where the strike-slip movement is transformed into a diverging or converging movement, hence the name transform fault. But what does it mean? The movement is being transformed. This figure shows the ocean floor of the Pacific Ocean. And in this bathymetric map, we can recognize the morphological structures of the mid-ocean ridges and the deep sea trenches above the subduction zones. But you can also see that in particular the mid-ocean ridges are repeatedly interrupted and offset. And this is exactly where the transform faults are located. They connect the offset ridge segments and therefore contribute to the fact that despite the offsets it is a continuous plate boundary, just offset from time to time along the transform faults. But you can also see the structural elements that are a quasi-continuation of the transform faults. These dashed lines are the fracture zones that are in direct continuation of the transform faults, but where no strike-slip movement occurs. At these fracture zones, only vertical, compensatory movements occur, as I will show in a moment. And here lies one of the most commonly seen errors, namely that these fracture zones are referred to as the transform faults, but they are not. This map shows the southern Atlantic. The morphology of the ocean floor is more pronounced here than in the Pacific, which is due to the spreading velocity which is significantly lower in the Atlantic than in the Pacific. And you can see oftentimes very large offset of the ridge segments where the offset may be more than 900 kilometers. The fracture zones are also very clearly defined here and as in the Pacific they also occur in prolongation of the transform faults. But here in the South Atlantic you can see something else very clearly. The length of the transform faults remain constant from the beginning of their evolution and does not change after the ocean opens, at least if you look at transform faults that connect segments of a mid-oceanic ridge. There are also other situations in which the length of the transform fault changes, but I'll come uh, to those later. Now, first, the transform faults at the ridge axis. Let's take a closer look at the ridge axis and the transform faults in between the central area of the Atlantic. If you copy these lines along the fracture zone to the edges of the continents, once west to the coast of South America and once east to the coast of Africa, you notice that they coincide fairly well with the coastlines. Well, that's a bit imprecise, but there is a basic accordance on both sides, and that is a consequence of the spreading between South America and Africa. 
the area highlighted in red here is the newly formed oceanic crust since the opening of the South Atlantic in the Middle Cretaceous that was around 115 to 110 million years ago. I've compared the situation in the Middle Cretaceous here on the left with the present situation. This is exactly the same place that we just looked at. Here you can clearly see that the curves of the ridge axis with the transform faults corresponds more or less exactly to the fault line between South America and Africa, where a rift drum evolved 150 million years ago. We can take a look at the process of the breakup of a continent with the formation of transform faults in this short animation. Here you can see how a continent breaks up not along a straight line but on a dividing line with several offsets. This has pretty much simplified the situation between South America and Africa. First, a graben opens up in which soon after the opening new oceanic crust forms which then evolves into an ever-widening ocean. And you can clearly see here that the lengths of the transform faults remain constant throughout the entire time. The transform fault only extends from the central rift graben of one ridge segment to the rift graben of the next ridge segment and not beyond. The transform faults uh, that are the three horizontal purple lines here in this animation. If you look at the age map of the oceanic crust, you can also clearly see the offset of the ridge segments. The magnetic stripe patterns always arise parallel to the ridge axis, so they are inevitably offset. And here again, indicated the transform folds and fracture zones between Africa and South America to show the clear offset. These considerations result in the model shown here for a transform fold between two rich segments of a mid-oceanic spreading zone. The transform fold runs exactly from transformation point to transformation point and not beyond. Because, as you can see here, the direction of movement of the two plates is in the same direction from the transformation point onwards. They run parallel and there is no longer any lateral displacement there, unlike in the transform fault. These zones are called fracture zones because they are not inactive. There is still movement within them. However, this is exclusively vertical and is caused by the different rates of subsidence of the oceanic lithosphere of different ages. Um, so for this we have to look at the entire oceanic lithosphere again. I had already pointed out in chapters 3.2 and 3.3, which deal with the formation and aging of uh, oceanic lithosphere, that the average weight of the oceanic lithosphere increases with age and that it therefore subsides more and more into the asthenosphere. The subsidence is particularly rapid at the beginning because as the earth scenery cools, first a lot and then less and less lithospheric mantle is added. The altitudes of the oceanic crusts on the two sides of a fracture zone thus equalize with age. This is shown here by the arrows of different lengths, with the older oceanic crust sinking more slowly and the younger oceanic crust in front subsiding faster. Okay, so far the principle of transform falls in the next chapter, I will go into the geometric relationships and introduce different types of transform faults. This time, thank you for listening and I'll be happy if you stick around. I recommend continuing with the video on the different types of transform faults.